It is about visionary leadership in Nigeria. Visionary leadership in Africa. How do we build that kind of leadership that can lift the people of Africa to the pinnacle of development? So I make this point that one of the striking features of a visionary leader is the courage to stand on his ideals and the courage to learn how to check those bent on the politics of primordial sentiment as a way into the future. That visionary leader does not lose the civil courage required to redefine society. He goes ahead to transmit such courage into the people he governs. What would the people do when they recognize his visionary instinct? They reciprocate by using his development efforts to reshape their future. He becomes an exemplary example to the people he governs. It is about becoming a factor in the people's march to innovative future. Is that what we have in Nigeria at the moment? Is that what we had in the 1960s? Did the military government of the time show visionary instinct? I am talking of this time, a time when the thoughts of the minds of the people and the works of their hands lead to greater productivity and wealth for the land. When the righteous governs, the people are happy. At this time of happiness, the visionary becomes the determining influence on public life. I also need to make this point. When you don't have visionary leaders, they also become the determining point on the people. The people will always emulate their leaders. So if leadership is corrupt, the generality of the people will be corrupt and poverty will be the name of the game. If you have a visionary leader that becomes a determining influence on public life, the people become free to pursue their happiness and defend themselves from marauders bent on inflicting pain and poverty on the land. Are you there? We are streaming. And let me see. Gift Dixon. Thank you. Yusuf Shegun is here. Omotayo. Oluwa Rotimi. Onao Onobamiro. Thank you. Amadi Lawson. Thank you for joining the broadcast. You can call your friends. Tell them. We are on again. A visionary. Through a process of adaptation, is strategically sensitive to nationhood. A visionary is above excessive political partisanship. Lin Kuan Yu was a visionary. Deng Xiaoping of China was a visionary. Obafemi Awolowo was a visionary. Nelson Mandela was a visionary. Julius Nyerere of Tanzania was a visionary. What about the president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame? 
He is a visionary, but a dictator, a dictator at the extreme. But again, dictatorship also has the benevolent side of it. Lin Kuan Yu, to some extent, was a benevolent dictator. A visionary makes the economy of the land he governs a destination of choice. You want to go to Dubai because it is governed by visionaries. You want to travel to Singapore, a land built by visionaries. You want to go to America, to Britain, built by visionaries. A visionary creates new industrial and technological complexes and lead the aspiration of the people in this direction. Through this, the visionary launches innovating stimulus for development. It comes from the people's government knowing its place by providing the enabling environment for wealth creation. I'm talking about return for enterprise and spread of wealth to every part of society. Until there is wealth distribution, there is no visionary leadership. It involves giving priority to public education transportation, and health services. It involves encouraging cooperation among the various segments of society, leading to social capital. We need to build visionary leadership in all facets of our life, from the family, to the church, to the mosque, to the market, Visionary leadership would do the magic. I dream of a self-confident and outward-looking society that a visionary Nigerian leader can build. That leader that can rise above the insular, xenophobic, tribalistic, and suspicious society Orders instigate. The time comes to bring the political goodwill and commitment and energies of many people of talent into politics and government. Our society, for too long, fits into the description of Yeats in his poem Second Coming where he said, the best lack all conviction, why the worst are full of passionate intensity. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Is the center holding in Nigeria?